The following program has earned the National Association of Broadcasters seal of apology. From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This episode is brought to you by the audiobook Bed Bugs by Jason R. Davis, narrated by Darren Marlar. If you love horror but hate bugs, this is the audiobook for you. Hear a free sample and support Marlar House by downloading the audiobook for yourself at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. Three-time Oscar winner Daniel Day-Lewis is retiring from acting… again. Well, that's what he says. Personally, I think he's just doing research for his next role, learning how to portray unemployed actor Brendan Fraser. A Starbucks customer in Chicago stabbed another over an argument about a wrong order. One of the best reasons I've heard yet to switch to decaf. TVs are quickly becoming viewers' second screen. That was proven recently when the TV networks aired their season finales. Live ratings for shows across all networks were down 30 to 40 percent from just one year ago as viewers more and more turned to their mobile devices for entertainment. Remember when we couldn't wait for the day to have giant, full-wall TV screens in our homes? Now we're watching six-inch screens and we think it's the best thing ever. Kim Kardashian says she has not spoken to Caitlyn Jenner in months. I'm not sure who's the bigger winner there. Second Lady of the U.S. Karen Pence has installed a beehive containing 20,000 bees in the vice presidential official residence. D do they allow beehives at the White House? Because, well, Pence might have to move there in a few months the way things are going. President Trump is being investigated for obstruction of justice, which could wind up costing him the presidency. Which of course is horrible, absolutely devastating news to the cast of Saturday Night Live. A new poll released Tuesday by CBS News finds that just 36 percent of Americans support President Trump's performance so far. Trump's disapproval rating, meanwhile, has jumped to 57 percent. The remaining 7 percent of those polled still have not come to accept that Trump was elected president of the United States. A new survey says that 24 percent of Americans don't have a single dollar set aside for emergencies. Oh yeah, sure, don't ask us 75-cent people if we're prepared. The city of Odessa, Texas has a new Trump in town. Ernesto Acosta legally had his name changed to Ernesto Trump. Yes, in honor of the president. He told reporters he has been contemplating the idea since Trump began running for office and that the process took over a year. The irony that he's Hispanic and a Trump supporter isn't lost on Ernesto, and he's certain that he's the only local person who has changed their name to the president's. Now, the truth is, a quick Google search couldn't find anyone else in the entire U.S. who has changed their name to Trump. In fact, people with the name Trump are looking for ways to get away from the surname just to make their lives easier. Seattle has voted for a 1.75 cents per ounce tax on sodas to help the poor. Okay, we already saw that giving a Pepsi to a police officer was a bad move. Now we're going to try it on the homeless? Shout out to Sine Jamil and Martina Boyd in Dublin, Ireland. Love you, ladies. Boeing unveiled plans for a bigger aircraft. Now, each plane will be able to carry so many more angry, disgruntled passengers. Rob Kardashian and Black China are back on again. And I have no idea who either of those people are. The extreme heat in Phoenix this week has forced American Airlines to cancel dozens of flights over the past few days. Their jets can only operate safely up to 118 degrees. You're still welcome to fly United Airlines, though, because they're desperate for people willing to fly with them. A Colorado group wants to ban the sale of smartphones to kids under 13. Parents are against the ban, though, as this means they would lose their primary source of smartphone tech support. Maybe those outdoor work crews made up of prison inmates aren't as bad as you'd think. In Georgia, a correctional officer who had been supervising such a work crew suddenly passed out and lay unconscious on the ground. Six inmates quickly surrounded him, but rather than grab his gun, they grabbed his cell phone and called 911. Meanwhile, they removed the officer's bulletproof vest and performed CPR. One of the inmates said it wasn't about who's in jail and who wasn't. It was about a man going down and we had to help him. Polk County authorities say the officer told the inmates he wasn't feeling well and soon after collapsed. 
Polk County Sheriff Johnny Motes said, "...my guys were thinking the worst on their way over there, but when they got there, all the inmates were with the officer. All were accounted for. They took care of him. The officer then received medical attention, and he's now doing fine." To thank the inmates who really stepped up in a time of crisis, the sheriff's office provided them with a free pizza lunch. The officer's family provided dessert. Okay, you know, I never thought I would say this, but three cheers for the inmates, huh? The Sherlock team are reuniting on a new version of the classic horror story Dracula. They'll begin work on a series of BBC specials based on the classic 1897 novel by Bram Stoker in which the bloodthirsty Count moves from Transylvania to England. It'll come to TV in 2019. You know, come to think of it, Benedict Cumberbatch, he'd be great for that, too. In Costa Rica, the country's president went through an unusual situation while speaking to reporters. A wasp entered his mouth. President Luis Guillermo Salas stopped talking, swallowed it, and then announced, I ate it, I ate the wasp. Mental note here, do not declare war against Costa Rica. Its president is so tough he swallows live wasps. Michael Phelps is set to race a great white shark on the Discovery Channel. I can guarantee Michael swim a lot faster if you put that shark in the same water as him. There's talk of Illinois becoming the first state ever to declare bankruptcy. Gee, it's such an honor to live here. Someone kicked in the door of a Florida man's apartment and took a salad from his refrigerator. Police have no clues. Oh, you forget catching this guy. I want to know where that salad was made. I mean, if it's so good, people are willing to break down doors just to steal the salad. You know that's got to be some good salad. A cafe in Melbourne, Australia has sparked outrage for selling teaspoons of Nutella for $5. The cafe, Spoonful of Sugar, launched their first pop-up store with sugar-loaded treats. The catch being these desserts come on teaspoons. Uh, so why is this sparking outrage? I mean, if people are stupid enough to pay five bucks for a teaspoon of Nutella, why should you care? I mean, in fact, wouldn't it behoove you to start up your own business and make money off of these morons yourself by selling teaspoons of peanut butter or cookie dough? You know, come to think of it, why am I not doing this? If you don't hear from me tomorrow, it's because I have quit this job to start up a teaspoon store. Join the Weirded Forward movement, where Marlar House weirdos make a difference in the world a couple bucks at a time. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. Our latest Weirded Forward campaign is for Richard. He was unjustly imprisoned for a crime he didn't commit and was behind bars for 17 years. Well, Kansas doesn't have a compensation plan for those unjustly imprisoned, so it's up to us to help this guy get his life back. Get the details by watching the video I made about it at WeirdItForward.com. Hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos. And if you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on your own social media. Wow, I feel so good about this show. I feel so vibrant and creative. I might just stop by the yogurt shop on the way home and go crazy with the sprinkles. Find even more weird news that I didn't have time for on the Facebook page at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos!